Are you ready for a five minute tutorial on something really cool you can do in ChatGPT for your digital product business? I'm Mary Beth Santos. I help you create and sell digital products like eBooks, courses, and workshops. And I help you do it faster, simpler, with less stress than ever before because of ChatGPT. And today I'm going to show you the prompt that I use to create an infographic for my audience. Now I use the infographic that I created as a little bit of extra value to send to my email subscribers. And I'm also gonna add it into my welcome sequence for anybody new that joins my list. And if you wanna join my email list, you can just grab the free Chris Prompt cheat sheet somewhere down there somewhere and you'll be on my email list. Okay, let's go. Okay, here we are in a brand new chat with ChatGPT. I am using GPT-4. If you're wondering if it's worth it to upgrade to the paid version of ChatGPT, I will say this. I do pay for the upgrade. It is better. It's markedly better. But if you are not ready to pay for it yet, stick with 3.5. 3.5 is perfectly fine too, but 4 is better. I promise you. Okay, so I have a prompt all ready to go to get this um, infographic from ChatGPT. I'm gonna do it for my own niche and I'm pasting it in here. This is a crisp prompt. 90% of the time when I am looking for an output from ChatGPT, I'm going to use a crisp prompt. And basically what crisp stands for is it's gonna have context, it's gonna have a request, it's gonna have the intent, of the prompt, it's gonna have a style request and it's gonna have parameters. So those are the five letters, those are the five things that you wanna have in your prompts in order to get kind of more personalized, more unique outputs from Ch ChatGPT. So here is an example of a Chris prompt, okay? So I always say good afternoon or good morning or something like that. So good afternoon, I wanna make an infographic for my audience that walks through the three phases of an online business with digital products. Now that's, context. It's not enough context for what I want. Sometimes just that is enough. But these three phases are something that I specifically talk about. So if I just ask it for three phases, it's going to make them up and it's probably not going to match what I call the three phases. So I'm going to get really specific with a lot more context on this prompt and I'm adding what the three phases actually are. Phase one, create your first low cost digital product and ebook is perfect. Set it up to sell and promote on social media. Phase two, create a free opt-in that leads to your paid product. Set up a tripwire funnel, continue social media promotion. Phase three, start creating a higher cost, more robust offer. A course, workshop, or challenge is perfect. Create an email series as a way to promote it. Okay, so that's context. All of that was context. We did ask already, we have the request in here because I, want, I said I wanna make an infographic. Now, ChatGPT cannot actually make an infographic. What it can do is give you the content that you will put into a template, which I'll show you in Canva at the end. You can then put it into a, into a template. You can use Canva or whatever design tool you like to use, but it's only gonna give you the content. It can't actually create the visual infographic itself. So we have the context was all that stuff. The request is I would like to make an infographic. The intent is I want to be able to share the infographic on social media. I actually ended up using it for email marketing or in my, I ended up using it for my email list. I would like it to be positive and inspiring and casual in tone. So that's our style. And then I added a parameter, something that I add often. Please do not include anything regarding paid ads because that's not something that I use and it's not something that I teach. So I, if I'm not sure what else to put as a parameter and it has to do with marketing, I will usually add that in there as to tell ChatGPT, don't cover this part. So. We're gonna hit the little purple arrow and we're gonna see what ChatGPT gives us. I've done this similar prompt to this with much less context a bunch of different times. I'll show you some of the other infographics that I've done before the end of the video. I've done this a bunch of times with all different niches. When I go live on TikTok, I will ask for a topic and we'll go through and do this exercise with anybody who wants to be brave and tell me their niche. And so you can see it's giving me the content potentially for the infographic. So it's got the three phases, it has an introduction. What else does it have? Like I said, it can't give you a design. It can't actually produce like the designed infographic, but it will give you, let's see, it will give you some direction on what you can do with the design. I think I saw it coming up down here at the bottom. Use simple color scheme that's vibrant but not overwhelming. Use casual friendly fonts that are easy to read. Make use of white space to avoid clutter. 
include social media icons to encourage sharing. So good. It's giving me a call to action to include. And you can see that it's giving me a couple options for a title. So that's great. A little bit of an introduction before we get into the three phases. Follow these three exciting steps to create and grow your digital product empire without spending a penny on ads. Now I said specifically, do not talk about ads. <laughs> Mention them anyway, but it did it in a way that makes sense for, for what I asked it to do. But that's interesting. I said specifically don't use it, and there it is, but that's okay. So phase one, use a col colorful icon to represent the phase. So it's giving me, again, more direction on what I can put in for some design elements, ignite your ideas, kickstart your journey with an ebook. So it's covering all of, we don't use that word, we'll use attract your fans, but it's covering all of the different phases that I talked about in the prompt. It's got a nice conclusion here, and again, the design tips and the call to action. So, you know really good information there that I could certainly take that information and put it into a template in Canva and have a lovely infographic to give to my audience. So that's a good, that's a perfectly fine example. I'm going to show you one or two more from different niches. Okay, so here is another example. I had somebody in one of my lives on TikTok who helps middle school aged parents of middle schoolers who are struggling with math. She helps them to help their kids basically get better at math. So we did a crisp prompt. Now you can see I don't have as much context here because this isn't really a topic I know anything about and it can be difficult to communicate with somebody during a live on TikTok. So this is pretty broad. I have an audience of parents who have children in middle school who are struggling with math. That's a little bit of context. Can you create an infographic? There's our request that I can share with my audience that will help them understand middle school math. The intent of the infographic is to educate parents on the content their children are learning. Please make the style professional, but fun and cute. And please include algebra, geometry, and problem solving. Those came from my guest at the live on TikTok. So those were specific, those parameters, that last part, the parameters were specific to her. So here is her, and I think I, no, I did this one in four too. Here is the output that she got. She's got a title, I like that, Middle School Math Demystified, subtitle, Fun Guide to Parents, for Parents to Understand What Their Kids Are Learning in Middle School Math. It's giving, again, here's that design help. It's giving like what type of layout you should have. It's got a color scheme here. Okay, now I didn't say anything specifically about algebra, and I did that for a reason. It's because I don't know anything about algebra. I don't really know anything about geometry. Whatever I learned, I've definitely forgotten. Sorry to my middle school teachers, but that's all gone. So this is all chat GPT. It's giving like whatever you are learning in middle school in algebra and geometry, it knows that. And I know that it knows it because I asked the person that asked for this and she said, it's good. It's pretty right on, but you do have to be careful with ChatGPT. Always check it to make sure that it's actually accurate. So here's the algebra portion, geometry portion, and the problem solving portion. It's got information for a footer here and a call to action. I like that it has a little quote there. I think that's great. Now it's telling us at the bottom that you can have, you can share it with a graphic designer or use an infographic creation tool to bring it to life. Canva is perfectly fine for that. I would not worry about getting a designer to do this for you. What I like about this one, even more than the one I just created for myself, is it's got, there's a really nicely laid out set of bullet points here. You've got your header, you've got an icon, you've got bullet points. So they're all gonna have three or four bullet points and then a tip. So it's very well structured. So that is not something you have to think about as you are creating the infographic. That structure is already there for you. So that was a great, that's a great example of another type of infographic that ChatGPT can give you in a different niche. And I think I have one more. Okay, here's one more example for you. This one is in the self-care for autoimmune diseases, okay? So again, we've got a crisp prompt here. Good afternoon, I want to make an infographic. So that's our request. We're doing it a little out of order, but that's okay. I want to make an infographic for my audience of people with autoimmune diseases. That's a little bit of context. The topic of the infographic will be using self-care to improve their symptoms and overall quality of life, our intent. I would like to use the infographic as an image I can share on social media. That's another form of intent because it's because it's telling ChatGPT that this is something that we are going to use as a marketing tool, something that we're promoting our brand with. I would like it to be positive and inspiring and casual in tone. Please give at least seven tips that they can use daily. Here it is. Seven separate tips. 
I love that it gives you a little emojis, like those little touches, those little design touches are things that I always forget to do. Same thing with my YouTube descriptions. It always adds in emojis into my YouTube descriptions for me, which I love. So there's our seven tips. And again, it's got some design tips here at the bottom. Use soft, soothing colors like blues, greens, and pastels. Employ a casual handwritten font. Really gets nitty gritty into the design here, so that's great. Add a note at the bottom mentioning that these tips are general suggestions and individuals should consult their healthcare provider. ChatGPT is always very like on point with the make sure you check with a doctor and all of that stuff, which I always think is funny. Now, I think this one skipped a heading. Yes, this one did not have a headline or a subheading. So I did ask it for that. Within the same chat, just can you add a heading and a subheading? I've already given it the context. I've already given it the style and all of that. So I don't have to repeat that. I can just now with the second prompt, it can be very simple. Can you add a heading and subheading? Certainly. Daily dose of self-care. Subheading uplifting habits for champions battling autoimmune diseases. So that's that again. You can take this, find the template that you like on Canva and start populating it. Now we're gonna go look at the one that I created based on the initial output that I got. So we'll take a look at that. Okay, here we are in Canva. You can see this is here on the left. This is the actual template that I used. I didn't really have to change too much to it. It was a little tiny bit complicated with this like road over here. So there was a little bit of editing that happened there. But for the most part, I was just Copy, copying and pasting the information that I got from my output into the infographic. It definitely took, I obviously had to change all the colors to my brand colors and I had to change the fonts and I had to do a little finagling with getting everything to fit. And I obviously took out the original template had five steps. I only needed three. So I took a couple of steps out, which gave me more room for more text. But for the most part, this was super easy to do. I want to say it took me maybe a half an hour to actually get it into the design and getting the, that output. We've been on this video for 13, it's going to be less than 13 minutes by the time you, by the time I edit it. So getting the output is minutes. It does not take very long at all. You're going to spend most of your time in Canva doing the actual design. If you have an hour this weekend to create an infographic for your email subscribers or for your audience on Pinterest or Instagram or wherever you, t Twitter, if you're wherever you're posting like your static social media, make this, make a bunch of them if you have the time. They're not, it's not hard. It's pretty fairly simple. I never like to say it's easy, but ChatGPT really does make at least getting the content very simple. So if you loved that, Follow along, hit the subscribe button, and I've got a bunch of other really quick ChatGPT five-minute prompt tutorials that you can use for your online business with digital products too. Thanks.